Ah, there we are then. Right, and the brief reading is this. It talks about the end of the world, really. And it says this, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And the phrase I want us to think about is the dead, small and great, will stand before God. Small and great. Now I'm here because I am a great royalist. I had a great time for the Queen Mother and for our present Queen. In fact, you'll probably be appalled to know that when the Queen Mother died, we went up to London and I stood for five hours in a queue to walk around the coffin when she was lying in state. My wife did not. She thought I was wasting my time and she went to the V and A or whatever other museum it was with the children. But I was determined to go and stand in the queue and it snaked all the way across the river and all the way down the embankment and you only had about five minutes to walk past the coffin. But because she was, in my opinion, a wonderful woman and had a strong faith in God, I wanted to pay my respects. I will probably do the same if the present queen dies. I'm not so sure about Charlie Boy, but I'll leave it there for the present moment. So why did I read about the dead, small and great? Well, I watched the funeral of the Queen Mother on the television and I noticed in her opinion that was given and apparently she chose these readings and the hymns for her funeral she recognized that although she was the queen, or the queen mother, there was one who was higher than she. And in her funeral, this was read, and I read it to you now. Thus it hath pleased Almighty God to take out of this life and to his divine mercy the late most high, most mighty, and most excellent Princess Elizabeth. Now this is the queen mother. Queen Dowager and queen mother, Lady of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, Lady of the Most Ancient and Most Noble Order of the Thistle, Lady of the Imperial Order of the Crown of India, Grand Master and Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, upon whom had been conferred the Royal Victorian Chain, Dame Grand Cross of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, and Dame Grand Cross of the Most Venerable Order of the Hospital of St. John. She was quite important. But this is a reading that she chose from the Pilgrim's Progress, a personal choice. I see myself now at the end of my journey. My toilsome days are ended. I am going now to see that head that was crowned with thorns and that face that was spit upon for me. I have formerly lived by hearsay and faith, but now I go where I shall live by sight, and shall be with him in whose company I delight myself. I have loved to hear my Lord spoken of, and wherever I have seen the print of his shoe in the earth, there I have coveted to set my foot. His name to me has been as a box of perfume. His voice to me has been most sweet, and his face I have more desired than they that have most desired the light of the sun. His word I did use to gather for my food and for antidotes against my faintings. He has held me and has kept me from mine iniquities. Yea, my steps has he strengthened in his way. Glorious it will be to see how that region will be filled with horses and chariots, with trumpeters and pipers, 
with singers and players on singed instruments to welcome pilgrims like me as we go to the beautiful gate of the city. There's one who was important as far as the world was concerned, but knew that she was just one of God's children and how she longed to see him face to face. So what about the present queen? What do we think about her? Well, since the year 2000, her Christmas speeches and broadcasts have mentioned more and more each year her faith in Jesus Christ. And that is quite remarkable, you know, because the government famously does not do God. And it seems to be that the more the government has refused to do God, the more the Queen has done him, to use that expression. Here are some quotes from her Christmas speeches. In her Christmas broadcast in December 2000, she said this, For me, the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework by which I lead my life. That's the Queen speaking. The teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God help me to frame my life. In 2012, she concluded her Christmas broadcast by saying she was going to pray for her people and inviting this practical response to Jesus Christ's message of love. This is what she said. This is the time of year when we remember that God sent his only son to serve and not to be served. He restored love and service to the center of our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer this Christmas day that his example, that's Jesus, and his teaching will continue to bring others to give the best of themselves in the service of people around them. The carol in the bleak midwinter ends by asking a question of all of us who know the Christmas story of how God gave himself to us in humble service. And this is what that carol says. Remember, this is the Queen saying this now. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Then the Queen said, the carol gives us the answer. What can I give him? Give him my heart. You see, she wasn't just a chapel-goer, as we might say. She wasn't just a church-goer. She had a real faith in Jesus Christ. She, like countless millions of people around the world, gave him her heart. And he has blessed her as a result. This is a Christmas message she mentioned in 2011. Although we are capable of great acts of kindness... History teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves, from our recklessness and from our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they may be, but a saviour with the power to forgive. It is my prayer that on this Christmas day, we might all find room in our lives for the message of the angels and for the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You can't get a more explicit statement of faith from someone important in this country than that. What does she call him? Not a general, not a philosopher. She calls him a saviour with the power to forgive. A book came out for her 90th birthday called The Servant Queen, and she wrote a foreword in it. And the book lists all these and many more expressions of her Christian faith from her speeches over the years, and she wrote the foreword. And this is what she says at the end of the foreword of this book, I have been and remain very grateful to you for your prayers and to God for his steadfast love to me. 
I have indeed seen his faithfulness. She knows, like her mother, that there will come a time when the dead, small and great, will stand before God. Many politicians don't recognise that. Many actors don't recognise that. I was appalled a little while ago to hear an interview with Stephen Fry. He's not my favourite character. But he was interviewed on Radio uh, Ireland and he was asked this. When you stand before God, by the way, Stephen Fry is an atheist. When you stand before God, what will you say to him? And this is what he said. This is what I'll say to him. Cancer in children? What right have you got to do something like that? Now let me tell you this. According to the Bible, when the, when the dead stand before God, whether they are great or small, you and I won't have anything to say. The Bible says every mouth will be stopped. We might have a, in our hearts to say to God this or that or the other. We will be so awed by his majesty that every mouth will be stopped. Stephen Fry won't be able to open his mouth and say a word because God is greater than he and he is greater than you and me and he was greater than the queen mother and she knew it and greater than the present queen and she knows it but the difference of course is this that if you have the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour you won't stand at that judgment seat when the dead, small and great, are raised, it's only the unbelieving dead and small and great that are raised to stand before God in that day of judgment. Those who have what the Queen calls a saviour with the power to forgive will not be there. They'll already be in his presence, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. And the small and the great will be there. And there will be cleaners. And there will be gardeners. And there will be blacksmiths. And there will be shop assistants. And there may be actors, though they're often too full of themselves. And there may be politicians, but I don't know whether they'll ever humble themselves. But there will be crowned heads there as well. Standing around a throne. Ransomed healed, restored, forgiven. Not because of who they are or what they have done, but because they have put their faith and trust in what the Queen calls a saviour with the power to forgive. We all need to be forgiven. We need to forgive one another. We need to forgive our friends, our relatives, our families, our neighbours. We need to be forgiven by God for sins small and great, as only those who have a saviour with the power to forgive, who will be able to do what the Queen Mother says, to stand or even to kneel in the presence of God in a day to come, knowing that we have a saviour. Queen Elizabeth has been queen for 70 years, the longest reign that there has ever been. She's a small woman when you see her. She's not tall, but she punches above her weight. And certainly when it comes to Christian faith, she is not one of those who's ashamed of the Lord. She speaks for him in a world that does not want to speak for him. And you can look over a long life, and you see people that have honoured her and do honour her. But we just put up a poster outside our chapel down there in Tenby, which Rebecca made, and there's a photo of the Queen. And this is the text we have underneath it, next to the 70 years. Those that honour me, I will honour, saith the Lord. And he has honoured her, because she has honoured him. 
Remember that request, that prayer that she made in one of her speeches on Christmas Day. It is my prayer that you too will find a saviour with the power to forgive. That saviour is Jesus Christ who died that we might be forgiven. May we put our faith and trust in him and who knows, one day you might be standing next to the Queen Mother up in heaven and praising God all on the same level. Because although we are all sinners in, Christ, in this world, we are also saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God help us to honour that woman in our own lives this week, but to remember her faith. And may God give us the same faith in the world in which we live. Thank you.